So in this video, we are going to compare Intel Core i7-1065G7 uh, with the AMD's Ryzen 7 4800U, the ultra portable laptop uh, processors. So I have been covering uh, more like a finance topics, uh, stock markets, and this is kind of related to that because I've also been comparing the Intel and the AMD stock market but this is a technology as well as the stock market related where we are going to see that why the AMD stocks are going up and this one comparison will also tell uh, some throw some light on how it's going doing so there are two parts as we know in the more recent processors the CPU and the GPU both of them integrated into one single uh, uh, die so uh, AMD uh, did have some advantage in the GPU, but with this more recent Gen 2 processor, it has taken a leap over the Intel in the CPU as well. Uh, and this primarily, there are two reasons of uh, actually, uh, yeah, two reasons of this. It's primarily driven by the 7 nanometer technology. Uh, AMD's have leap has used. Uh, TSMC foundry where Intel is still struggling at the 10 nanometer and it looks like a 30% but the matter of fact is when you square this number because in uh, one wafer if you look at uh, 10 nanometer by 10 nanometer it's 100 and it's 7 nanometer by 7 nanometer is 49 so it's actually it's make a twice the difference in terms of the number of the transistors you can fit in a given area and that's where we see that while Intel is struggling to fit in just the four cores, AMD has leapfrog and has been able to get like eight cores in that given area and that's how AMD's performance, the CPU performance has substantially gained past the Intel's processor and that's what we see in the R10, R20 multi-core benchmarking numbers here, 1632 versus 3102. And that is a big difference. It's a big difference to our Intel to bridge the gap. And un unless the Intel is doing something about fixing uh, its process, it's, it's hard for it to catch up AMD. Now, the good thing about the Intel still is that it's, it's single in single set performance is comparable and that's one respite for for Intel it's able to do uh, this even um, by maintaining its uh, clock frequency lower but all these are not good enough to go past AMD there's another thing uh, this these CPU they belong to the current uh, this uh, ice lake course and uh, very shortly it's going to launch the Tiger Lake and that should give us uh, some boost to the CPU performance maybe 12-15% or so but we still have four cores and the CPU uh, bridge is not going to be uh, bridged unless until like another at least one and a half year or so when Intel either goes to TSMC or fix its yield issue with its 7 nanometer process. By that time TSMC could be uh, jumping to the 5 nanometer. So one fifth path would be to at least Intel can at least start a, a parallel uh, design team that can work on the TSMC foundry because I think it's not a, I'm not an expert, but I think it's not just like you design and give out to the foundry of 7 meter. You need to work with that foundry for an extended period of time to optimize your process. So, but I believe that this is something in plan for Intel if I guess it rightly, because otherwise I don't see any quick way for Intel to fix those things. Now the GPU is another story and in, AMD is taking a leapfrog into the GPU as well. <coughs> Now look at this uh, uh, iGPU numbers uh, benchmark 845 versus 1792 3D mark number 3042 versus 6110. We don't need to go into the details of all these things and both of them are 15 watt TDP processor 
within that 14 watt amd is able to get you double the gpu performance and double the cpu performance so that is phenomenal the one thing that you need to keep in mind that when this in september when intel launches its tiger lake it's not able to catch up with the cpu performance but it has substantially improved its gpu performance and is going to catch up with amd in that area but cpu is still going to take a uh, time for it to catch up so that being said it's reasonable and it's uh, it's it's apparently a good thing that amd is stock market is justified its rise is justified its stock prices which was one at one point of time is struggling at two two and a half dollar uh, something like something around like 2000 or 2002 now it has jumped leapfrog past amd uh, intel and has gone substantially uh, higher uh, that being said the risk is intel is not going to sit uh, idle it's it's going to, to work on it and the risk with the AMD, owning the amd stock is that intel has a good chance of catching the things up within one year to one and a half year could be two two and a half year or so uh, and then uh, then uh, the the higher evaluation of amd could um, may not be justified unless it also increases its sale figure as fast as it it increased its processor performance and then there lies the hurdle there are existing sales channels that need to be broken up intel has a very strong hold in its um, sales channel for example it has a very good very good relationship with uh, dell and intel has more funds at its hands and talents are equally available in the market for designing that processor for example intel hired raja kaduri from amd for its graphics design team and that's the result we are seeing when intel launches in the its tiger lake uh, processor so this is my some quick overview of where we are i hope that makes sense uh, if you if you subscribe to my channel i will keep giving you more updates on intel versus amd thanks for taking a look